Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the ninth of the second month on our Creator's calendar as we comprehend it, which lines up with the 20th of April, 2024, on the Gregorian calendar. And we're going to continue with our reading of Genesis or Bereshit in the beginning, chapter 36. And this is actually just recapping or going over the descendants of Esau to begin with here. So it says, and these, wa ele, right, these. It's very similar to Aleph Lamed, Ella is another word for, it's a poetic way of saying, like the Babylonians say Ella for uh, Elohim. Or you'd say Eloa with a holem there or with a wa, and that'd be Elohim as well. But it doesn't mean that. So you, this is one thing that people get into when you look at letters and you look at how a thing is spelled. You you get, oh, well, that must be one thing and ignore something else. But that's not really the case. And just because two things are spelled the exact same way, they can be pronounced differently in the Hebrew language. Just something to be mindful of. <clears throat> but it says, and these are wa ele toledot, the generations, right? The ladot, if you remember, is the what's brought forth. And the tau is a, something that makes it past tense or future tense. And they translate this as the generations in English. Of Ishu or Esau. He, he, right, who, Edom, right? And that's quite like Adam, but it has a wa there. It means red, if you remember. <clears throat> and he was named that because of the red porridge that he had wanted and sold his birthright for. It says, And Esau took Eth, his wives, from the daughters of Canaan, which was a son of Ham who had taken that land unlawfully. And what isn't so clear in the Bible, if you will, or the common scriptures that we are familiar that we're we're all familiar with, but is very clear in the book of Yobelim and the um the other writings, is that the Canaanites they stole the land after they swore an oath that they would not do that. They broke their word, they broke their covenant and did the thing anyways. And that was even after their own father and brothers came and tried to reprove them and get them to turn from that. And they still refused. So, and, and this was Ham and Cush uh, and Mitzrayim. These were the men that the books of the recognitions of Clement and secular history will tell you became magicians and started pagan religions. Zoroasterism for one, right? But it says in the recognitions that Ham was the first magician. He passed it down to, to Nimrod. And they started the mystery religions with uh, the witchcraft that's involved with them. It was picked up and practiced by Canaan as well. But he had added the curse of breaking that covenant they swore an oath to do. And because he did that, and because he was doing all those things involved with witchcraft, which you can read about in the Wisdom of Solomon or Hokma Shalomo, <clears throat> chapters 12 through 14 or 16, I believe, it, it doesn't go all in detail there, but it, it periodically covers what the Canaanites or the sons of Canaan we're doing in the land that was so offensive to our creator. And it's because they were completely void of his Ruach and they had the adversarial one in them. And they were doing all the things pleasing to the one who hates love and truth and light. <clears throat> but because they broke that oath, they were completely going to be cut off. Every one of them in the land was wiped out. That was the injunction, although the children did not do that. Now, um, you can find the prevalence of the importance of oaths throughout Scripture. 
Zadik Yahu or Zedekiah in English made an oath with the king of Babylon and broke it, and that didn't work out so well for him, right? Everyone else that makes and breaks oaths ended up dying for it in positions of authority. These are very, very serious things. He does not like oath breakers. And that includes everyone that swears an oath to uphold and support the Constitution of the United States and is currently a traitor to it. Just because, and this is why this is important, <clears throat> the Constitution is based on the common law, and the common law is the Bible, is the Ten Commandments and the right rulings right there out of Exodus from chapters 20 through 23. You can find the, the evidence of that all the way back in Alfred the Great, his dooms or his judgments that he put together when he was reestablishing or codifying, recodifying the common law in England, that same common law that we brought and said this is ours in America. That's why our president, Andrew Jackson, said that we have not stated this nation on any monarch or, or any king or government but on the ability of every man to keep the ten commandments and the right ruling he didn't say the right ruling but it's the right rulings of scripture everyone being equal the government serving the people we serve our creator that's literally what the united states was supposed to be and we've had uh perversion from enemies coming in and because we've capitulated to enforcing things like sunday laws and christmas as a federal holiday which <clears throat> is the abomination of revelation you know uh, revelations in scripture the abomination of desolation there uh, that's why we're having the problems that we're having and the lack of the liberty in our country a national repentance is what's required individually and as a nation to get that liberty back though <clears throat> because if we keep doing the same things that they were we're going to have the same problems but it says and from the daughters of canaan eth ada all right and her name means to ornament or deck oneself all right and that is the daughter of elion Alion, okay, the Terebinth. Uh, the Hittite and uh, Hatti, if you remember, is terror, descendant of Heth, but um, I believe that means terror. Oh, they don't have it right here. Hatta, if you remember, we had looked at it the other day, but it means terror. Hatta. You just put a hey at the end. They say it's of uncertain derivati derivation right here. <clears throat> but when you, you want to look into what these names mean, and that's the parables of the narratives or actual real events that happened, the names. And when you look at these events with a childlike, well, this is what happened. And then you look at the meanings of these people's names, you get the parable of what he's trying to show and it's all about the basora you a great example is dawid the physical battles that he fought against the the philistines and the others are like the spiritual battles the beloved is fighting against terror and abuse and, and depression but you, you gotta look at what the names mean to see that <clears throat> so different picture here and it says and wa Aholibama, all right, that's the tent of the cattle, if I remember right, right? The tent of the high place, Bama, okay, sorry about that. Bama is also cattle, if I remember correctly, but this is a, a high place. Um, in that book, the Saxons of the East and the West, they mentioned the Bama, like the, the Olibama, but the Bama are the high places of Buddhism that are still prevalent in the East came from uh, the Hebrews that were over there <clears throat> for a connection with that Bama there. It says, um, the daughter of Anna, the 
okay, which is to sing, to cry, howl, or singing, ana. It's also to answer or reply. It's also the the poor, if I remember correctly, because it's the yeah ana. So same word, different ways of pronouncing it, but those are the meanings. And when you have the house of the poor, the house of the poor, that's Bethany. Okay, or Beth Anna, sorry, where he had went to before he went on the donkey and colt into Yarushlaim, <clears throat> is where Eleazar and Martha and Miriam lived as well, if you remember. But it says, and Anna, the daughter of Zibion, right, the Hivite. It means a hyena here. The hyenas are unclean for the things that they do, seemingly changing their uh, sex and having unclean acts. That's this one says chivi, probably villagers. All right, same as chava, a tent village. All right. It says and base math. All right. This was, a, I think this is a very interesting word, but I, yeah, perfume. It's the daughter of Yishmael, the sister of Neboyoth. So Esau, if you remember, or we'll read about this in the book of Yobelim, he had gotten two wives from the, the sons of Canaan while he was 60 years old, or when he was 40 years old, I'm sorry. And for 20 years, he tried to convince Yaakov to get married to some of their sisters or also marry a Canaanite woman, but he refused. And eventually, when he was 60, he went off to marry his, uh, his wives in the land of Syria there, right? But after Esau saw that his parents were not pleased with the Canaanite women, he married a daughter of Ishmael, who was the sister of Neboyoth. The Nebatine was the largest Arabian tribe that was still um, a, a name that was known and prevalent on maps before World War II. It was after then that it went away. But he was the largest tribe coming from the eldest son of Ishmael. Okay. And this is where you get the Edomites are a mixture of the sons of, of Yaakov. And then you have Ishmael who was half Egyptian as well, and then daughters of Canaan. In the women and in the children, in a physical sense here, spiritual application for later on. <clears throat> this is in Bor Ada, Ada, right? It means to ornament or deck yourself, to adorn or decorate. It's also to witness, I endow it, right eth yishu now i don't know why it has two of them here i'm sorry about that it might be in the stones to knock and in other versions of the masoretic text you'll have some words where it has a q or a kof and then a, a cough written before them and it would be as it is written kitovim wa korabim so out as it is written and then as it is said and they'll have the as it is written this is how it came down in the text and they preserve that because that's what they had but this is the proper pronunciation for actual hebrew and that's how they put the spelling now i can't advocate you know, just adding words because you think it's correcting the text. This is what they did. I'm not saying they're right or wrong. But I'm just pointing out the facts, okay? But what is actually written is a significant thing, and there's a meaning behind it. <clears throat> what that meaning is is a different thing we can talk about some other time because I don't have all the answers for everything. But he's intentional, and he doesn't make mistakes, and there's nothing... There's nothing that he does without cause. Yes, and he, yes, it, um, 
brother Michael or sister Katie made the comment that it was interesting how our Mashiach was anointed in Beth Anna with perfume with uh, and had her hair wiped with tears as well. <clears throat> but it says Yeshu, and that word is similar to he will deliver or he will cry out, right? He comes to help. Wa'eth Ya Alam, which comes from Alam is to conceal. And Parach, which means to make bald. Um, now, the idea of making bald is also to be shamed because you don't have the honor of having the covering of, of your head. If you remember when, uh, I believe it was Elishua or Elisha, who was mocked because he was balding. But it also mentions in Leviticus or in the Torah that a man who is balding, he is clean. So it's not to be a, dis a thing that's despised just because he's losing his hair. <clears throat> when I first read that, I saw, um, I instantly thought of Mr. Clean. There was a meme that had that uh, scripture on it, but that's not important at the moment. It was one of the things I was learning as I was going through that. and, and um, It helped me to retain the information. But, and then it says to go ball. And this is in these, Bene, the sons of Yeshu, Esau, who were born or who were begotten unto him in the land of Canaan. And took Esau, Eth, his wives, and Eth, his sons. Right? Wa, Eth, his daughters, Benotu, right? Benotah. Wa'eth, all the persons, or it's literally the souls here, or the nefot, nefshot, the inner beings, okay? Of his house, or in his house, right? The beto, wa'eth, and his livestock, and wa'eth, the aleph tau, all his animals literally the beast animals or cattle waf and all his goods or his possessions right something gotten acquired or acquiescion or acquisition rather which he had gained in the land of canaan and went to a country away from the face or mepene right so from the face of literally in the hebrew that is pene just like you have the sere yod it makes it of so it's from the face of or from the presence of yaakov his brother sorry about that and it says from his brother, it says, Ki for Yahi, for were or for it existed, their possessions too great, Rav, right? For them to dwell, literally to sit, remain, or dwell together, Yahadu, Yahda, they call that. But that is that, that word Yahad is all over the apostolic constitutions tragically translated into english as catholic but it talks about the catholic church it's literally the yahad or the united into one assembly kahal right that very same phraseology is used throughout the dead sea scrolls in the community rule and the damascus document as the yahad kahal and that word Yahad is rather interesting. It's like Ahad, one, but it's to be united into one, to be joined together. In the Proverbs, it says in the English, as 
Iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. But in the literal Hebrew here, it's as iron is made one by iron. Yachad, right? Iron's yachad by iron. So is a man yachad by the presence or countenance of his friend. Or another way of putting, he who goes with the wise shall be wise. He who goes with a fool shall be known. Or you, uh, good company, or sorry, bad company corrupts good habits. These are different things in the scriptures kind of alluding to that. Same principle there. You don't make it better. You, you become one with them. Which is why we're told to separate from that kind of thing. But anyways, you also have this in Psalm 135. Four, I believe it is, or 133, how tov and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together, gam yachad, or together in unity, it says, right? So, and that's an alluding to the people or the assembly being of one mind, one body, with one head, all united into one. That's that yachad there. But Yaakov and Esau and all their possessions were too great right, to dwell, yachad, right, and not could, right, the land where they sojourned, right, literally where they were foreigners or sojourn of them, support them, la shatat, <clears throat> nasha, this is to lift, carry, bury, like nasa again, you can see right there, nasa or nasha, which also means, <clears throat> just for everyone to see, to lend on interest or creditor, to beguile and deceive, right? Same spelling, different pronunciations. This is, and not could the land where they sojourn support them because, that word doesn't say because, it says from the face of their livestock. Or it's by means of or because of the presence of their livestock <clears throat> or their cattle. Simply put, they had too much for them. They were going to eat it all up and there wasn't going to be enough for them to, there to dwell. So dwell Esau in the hill country of Seir, right? A mountain range of Edom, okay? Which means hair. And again, he was called Esau because he was the hairy one. And it says Esau is Edom or Ishu Hu Edom. Okay. They say this means press or squeeze, which is interesting. The other version says that his name means Harry. All right, it says, And these, wa'Allah, the Toledot, the generations of Esau, Abi, the father of Edom, in the hill of Seir, right, of Seir. Right, and they're, they're called Beharas in the mountain or in the hill country of Seir. And it says, These Shemuth, the names of Bene, Ishu, the sons of Esau, Eliphaz, the son of Adah. Okay. Eliphaz is El is fine gold. El, and then Eli is El is, and then Faz, that Paz is fine gold. When you want to say sweet dreams <clears throat> in modern Hebrew, there's two ways to do it. Holomo metokim is the more traditional sweet dreams, or you can say holomo paz or holomo faz, which is pure gold dreams. It's a, just a colloquial way of saying sweet dreams. Just that's not really important here, but I where you can get an idea for how that is used even today. But Eliphaz is El is fine gold, the son of Adah, right? The wife of Esau, right? Reuel, 
Ra'uel, right, the friend of El. Ra can be a friend. If you put a hey at the end, it's a shepherd, but it's also to do evil. It's a close companion or uh, someone who's an evil to you, which is one that can betray you. That's a, all pictures in that one word, which is typified in certain people sometimes, right? Like Yahuda Ishkiriot or Judas uh, Iscariot right there. <clears throat> This is this is the son of Basemath, the wife of Esau, and were the sons of Eliphaz, Timan, Timon, right? It's a district in North Iman. It's the same as Yemen, right? And it means right hand. So he was the one that was his the son of his right hand, if you will, Timon. <clears throat> Omar, and remember, Omir is a word normally. But it comes from Amar, which is to utter or say. So the right hand says, Zephu. What? Gazing. To look out or about, spy or keep watch. That's that same word, by the way, that we were just speaking of in Yehezkiel for the watchman. He made him a Zepha over them. Okay. And if you remember in the foretellings in Te Taffy, when Yeremiyahu was speaking to Julius, the progenitor of the Julius line where the Caesars came from, he foretold to him that he's making him a watcher in the night. Probably that, that same word. Or he's giving him a watch in the night to keep, and that watch you would keep. Also alluding to that woman, that wanton woman of Proverbs that is going out in the night to seduce the young men without wisdom, right? <clears throat> or without comprehension. But moving on. And this is why Gatim, Gatim, they say is an uncertain derivation. Sorry about that. The ayin tau is time, right? Like at this time or now, the, the gimel, I wouldn't know. The gimel ayin, I'd have to look. Gamora starts with that, but that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, and it doesn't have one there. So I'd have to dig into the dictionary and see if we can't find something for that word. If anything, it could be the, the, the one sent now. But again, we don't know. I don't know if the gimel is ever used as a prefix in legitimate to uh, the proper use of the Hebrew there. The non-proper use, you have the re kinsman redeemer is goel. And that's literally the gimel el or the, the sent mighty one, if you will. Like our Mashiach is the kinsman redeemer who came to redeem us like that in the tip in the uh, picture of Yahuda, excuse me. So, and it was typified in Yahuda who got the kingdom, <clears throat> excuse me. And it says, Wa Kanaz, that Kanaz, <clears throat> and Kanaz means also something uncertain. Although Kanazi. That's the same thing. All right. We'll have to dig into those ones some other time. We'll also, and just to be perfectly candid with you, everyone on here and everyone listening to the video, you can't always trust what you can find online anymore. Things are not as they used to be. You can find actual evidence of that just by going to the Wayback Machine and having to look up stuff that's just removed now. But um, the Antichrist for Dummies, he shows things that were freely available on the internet 14 years ago that are completely gone now. You can only find it by using the Wayback Machine. Some of that stuff might be updated in how the use of these strongs are. 
I know that none of them go, none of them are keyed purely to the KJV. And while the KJV was not, is not perfect by any measure, it is far superior in its linguistic sincerity than the modern translations that were ordered by the Little Horn Bishop of Rome in his encyclical, which is the NIV and all these modern translations that muddy up the things that don't accurately teach things in scripture. That was an intended thing. But um, those those definitions are all over the place here. It's not it's not from the KJV anymore. It's from a slew of them, and you usually get a whole list of of different translations of whatever. These are specific names, so they don't always do it that way. But back on point here. Let's finish what we're doing. It says in. Kenaz. It says, in Timna, right, was the concubine of Eliphaz, um, Gisha in Japanese, Gisha, okay? But anyways, the son of Esau, and, and it says, and she bore to Eliphaz Eth Amalek. If you remember, or if you don't know, Amalek will be a thorn in the side of this, the children of Israel while they're in the wilderness there and they're um they were cursed by our creator to be wiped out he swore an oath that he would wipe them out in that time because of what they did and that was culminated or fulfilled in the times of Esther which is something that a lot of people want to reject but Amalek which Haman was a descendant of was the people that were throughout the empire that were going to rise up to persecute and wipe out the Yahudim that it was turned against. And they were actually at that time, as they sought to do, it was done unto them. And the hand of our creator, as foretold then, was established at that time. His judgment through his children, which is a reoccurring theme. Okay, but this is to labor or toil. And it says, and these were the sons of Adah, the wife of Esau, and these are the sons of Reuel, Nathan, or Nehath, sorry. All right. Nehath means to go down or descend. All right. And Zerach, which is seed. All right. Literally to sow or scatter seed, right? And Shema, it's the name revealed or to be there. It is also, it says to be desolated or appalled. Okay, because they have a mem there. That's not how they pronounce it in the other one, but they say that's the, related to this word instead. So it's to be desolated or appalled. Okay. And Miza. Misa is from Mize, means sucked out or empty. And these are the descendants or what came from Edom. Edom is representative of, in a spiritual sense, Catholicism. Okay. They were both born in the womb together, Jacob and Edom. And while, as we'll read in the book of Yobelim, they swore an oath to love one another and never, never have evil intent towards one another to both of their parents after the death of Leah Edom rose up broke his oath and attacked his brother and like the boar rushing into the spear that would kill him he violated the covenant that he made and so reaped the judgment <clears throat> but you can see just like in the in the names of the descendants of Cain after he had killed Abel his brother it tells a picture of things you can see it here when you take the time to look but we're we're kind of going all over the place because there's just a lot of information I'm trying to share so I'd encourage you all write down the names write down a simple meaning once you can find out what some of them are it might take a little bit of digging and then you'll find a picture here that's rather amazing when you realize what it, it's pointing to okay 
It says, and these were the sons of Basemath, the wife of Esau, and these were the sons of Oholibamah, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zebion, the wife of Esau. And she bore to Esau Eth, and this has that, again, how it is spelled and how it is pronounced, right? Yish, right? They say Yush, right here. Wa'eth Ya'alam and Korah, right? And then it goes over the chiefs of Edom. We'll read this real quick, but I'll leave my comments to myself here, except for one thing. The uh, One of these chiefs, I think he's the fifth generation down, but um, I'll point him out when we get there. It's actually Yob, and you don't know that unless you read the Septuagint version, and then you, you can see that Yob is the same man that's mentioned here. And then you know exactly who he was and when he wrote his book and when he lived. It says, these were the chiefs of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, were chief or aluf, Timon, chief Omar, chief Zepho, chief Kanaz, chief Korach, chief Gatim, and chief Amalek. These the chiefs of Eliphaz in the land of Edom, these the sons of Adah, and these the sons of Raoel, son of Esau, chief Nehath, chief or Aluf, right? Leader of a thousand, maybe, but the Aleph there. Zerach, chief, sorry about that. I don't know what happened to my spot. There we go. It says Chief Nehath, Chief Zerach, Chief Shema, Chief Mizva, Miza. These were the chiefs of Rawel in the land of Edom, and these the sons of Basemath, the wife of Esau, and these the sons of Oholibama, the wife of Esau, Chief Yaashu, right? Yesh Yeush, right? Chief Yalam, Chief Korak. These the chiefs of Oholibama, the daughter of Anna, the wife of Esau. This is these the sons of Esau, and these their chiefs. He who is Edom, right? He is Edom. Esau is Edom, just to be clear. It says these the sons of Seir, the Horite who inhabited the land, Lotan and Shubal, and Zebion, and Anna, and Dishon, and Ezer, and Dishan. And these were the chiefs of the Horite, the sons of Seir, in the land of Edom. And those are the, some of the women that he had married and they had intermingled with, right? It says, and were the sons of Lotan, Horai, Heman, and sister of Lotan was Timna. And these were the sons of Shobah, Alion, and Menachath, sorry, Ebal, and Shifo, Onan, or Onam, rather. And these were the sons of Zebion, both Aya, right, and Anna. He was the Anna who found the water in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of Zebion, his father. And these the sons of Anna, Dishan and Oholibama, the daughter of Anna, and these the sons of Dishan, Himan, it's a Him, Himdan, Ishban, Ithran, Cheran. It says, and these were the sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zaavan, Akan, and these the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran. I, once we get to the kings, you'll see who Yoab was. I'm really going through these quickly, but it's naming not only the sons of Edom, but also the names of the other men, the indigenous people in the area, and who was chief over them. So you can see that these people eventually became one. Um, they This later group eventually mixed with the Ishmaelites, and they all became known as Arabians, or the mixed people. And later on in Antiochus, 
in history, there is some evidence to say that the first um, the first rise of Islam was amongst the Saracens, which they say is the sons of Sarah or the Edomites. But um, back on track here, it says, and these were the chiefs of the Horite, Chief Lotan, Chief Shobal, Chief Zebion, and Chief Anna, Chief Dishan, Chief Ezer, Chief Dishan. And these were the chiefs of the Horite, according to their chiefs, right, in the land of Seir. And here's the kings real quick. It says, and these the kings who reigned in the land of Edom, before there reigned any king over the sons of of Yisrael, meaning before Shaul, this is during their time in Egypt, they had chiefs, and then eventually kings, while they came into the wilderness and then came back into the land during the time of judges, and they had kings before they did, and then once they had kings, Dawid took them and put them in subjugation again, which they had already been previously. You'll see that when we read Yobelim. It says, And these were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before there reigned any king over the sons of Israel, and reigned in Edom Bela, or Bela'ah, the son of Beor, and the name of his city was Dinhaba. And when he died, Bela then reigned in his place Yobab, they call it, right? Yahubab, right? And this is the son of Zerah of Batra, or the sheepfold. And this is Job. So, okay. And when he died, Yoab, or Yobab, sorry, then reigned in his place Husham in, of the land of the Temanite. And when he died, Husham then reigned in his place Hadad. And we're familiar with Ben Hadad uh, throughout the scriptures, right? The son of Bedad, who attacked Midian in the field of Moab. And the name of his city, Avith. And when died, or that's Awith, right? And then when died, Hadad then raided in his place, Samla of Masraka. And when he died, Samla then reigned in his place, Shaul of Rehoboth by the river. And when he died, Shaul then reigned in his place, Baal Hanan, or the, the favor of the Lord, right? the the favor of Baal, the son of Achbor, right? And when he died, Baal Hanan, the son of Achbor, then reigned in his place Hadar. And the name of his city was Pa'ol, pa and name of his wife, Mehetabel, all right? Mehetabel. To Bel, right? The daughter of Mitred, the daughter of Mezahab, or it says Zahab right here, but they have Mezahab here. So perhaps they're missing the name. It says, and these were the names of the chiefs of Esau, according to their families and their places by their names, chief to. We just read all of these again. So, um, oh. These are a little different. We'll finish it. Okay. It says, Chief Timna, Chief Alva, Chief Yeleth. Okay. It says, Chief Aholibama, Chief Ella, Chief Pinon, Chief Kanaz, Chief Timna, or Timon, sorry, Chief Mibzar, Chief Magdil, and Chief Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom according to their settlements in the land of their possession, who Esau, the father of Edom. Okay. I'm sorry, the English doesn't always come through when you're reading uh, a literal translation. It, it, they will usually flavor it up for a proper English translation to make it sound nice. And I try not to do that. So it doesn't always come through clearly, especially when it's going through a list of names that, that don't really have any significance to us. But if we had more time or if anyone takes the time and you sincerely look up what these things mean, you'll see a picture of the characteristic of 
what Edom represents as a body politic. And that still carries on true to its spiritual application, which again, we would know as Catholicism today. But of willing these things will be more clear as time goes on. Until then, you all have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat, a great week ahead of Shabbat Tov, and we will see you next time.